Hi everyone, welcome back. If you are new, please consider subscribing. My name is Yadi and I create educational videos for beauty professionals in training and for those who like to continue learning. Find me on all social media platforms as Glam and Beyond. In today's video, we are going to be going over Chemistry Terminology State Board Prep Part one. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and remember that information is not limited to the one shown in this video. Be sure to go back and read your textbook for more information on each subject. I want to wish you good luck on your test. Now let's get started. Now I know going over terminology is not the most fun thing to do, but many times it is definitely necessary. So here we go, number one, acidic solution. What is an acidic solution? Well, it is a liquid that has a pH below seven. Anything that is below seven is considered acidic, like lemon juice, for example. At seven, it would be considered neutral. For example, pure water will be neutral. Anything above seven will be considered alkaline, like baking soda, for example. So lemon juice or vinegar are acidic solutions. Number two, acid alkali neutralization reaction. Definition, when an acid with low pH and an alkali base high pH mix, they cancel each other out and form water plus a salt. Now, like mixing hot and cold water together, you end up with something more balanced, not too extreme. So, for example, if you spill something acidic like vinegar on a surface, you can neutralize it with something alkaline like baking soda for instance. In skincare, neutralizers are used after chemical peels, something that's acidic, to safely bring the skin's pH back to normal. Number three, alkaline solution. An alkaline solution is a liquid that has a pH higher than seven. Think of the pH scale like a ruler. Seven is the metal, neutral, like we said earlier, pure water. Numbers above seven are alkaline. For example, baking soda mixed in water is an alkaline solution. In beauty, many soaps and cleansers can be alkaline. They can cleanse, but if they are too alkaline, they may be very drying or irritate the skin because the skin is naturally slightly acidic. Number four, alkalis. Alkalis are a special group of bases that dissolve in water to make an alkaline solution. Compounds that react with acids to form salts. Think of alkalis as a soap maker, okay, soap makers of chemistry. They're the bases that mix with water and become usable. So for example, once again, baking soda and ammonia are alkalis. In beauty, alkalis are used in, for example, hair relaxers, hair colors, and some cleansers because they open the hair cuticle. Hope you're still with me. Number five, alpha hydroxy acids, also known as AHAs. What are AHAs? Well, they are a group of water, water soluble acids made from fruits, milk, or sugar that help exfoliate the skin by loosening the bonds holding dead skin cells together. AHAs are like gentle glue removers. That's a good way to put it. They soften the glue between old skin cells so they can shed, revealing fresher skin underneath. So a common example of AHA would be glycolic acid, lactic acid, 
and citric acid. And yes, of course, there's a few more. Number six, ammonia. What is ammonia? Ammonia is a colorless gas with a very strong smell that is composed of hydrogen and nitrogen. When dissolved in water, it becomes an alkaline solution. Ammonia is a powerful cleaner. It's sharp, strong, and can cut through grease and build up. So for example, household cleaning products often contain ammonia. In beauty, ammonia is used in hair color products to raise the hair's pH, which helps open the cuticle layer so color can penetrate. Ammonia. Number seven, anion. An anion is a negatively charged ion. It's an atom or molecule that has gained an extra electrons. Examples, in skincare, some active ingredients dissolve into anions in water. This helps them interact with the skin. In electrical treatments, like for example, galvanic facials, anions move towards the positive electrode and help drive ingredients deeper into the skin. Number eight, atoms. Atoms are the smallest chemical components often called particles of an element. Atoms, the tiny building blocks of everything around us, all matter, including your skin, water, and the air you breathe is made of atoms. Think of atoms like Lego pieces. Each Lego is tiny, but when you connect them, you can build a house, a car, or anything. Number nine, cations. A cation is a positively charged ion. Think of it like a balloon that has lost air. Losing electrons give it a positive charge. So it's attracted to negative charges, anions. In galvanic facials, cations move towards the negative electrode, helping deliver ingredients into the skin. Number 10, chemical change. A chemical change happens when a substance changes into a completely new substance with different properties. Like baking a cake, for instance. Once the ingredients like flour, eggs, sugar are mixed and baked, you can't, you cannot separate them back into their original form. Another example would be when hair is colored, when hair is dyed, the chemicals cause a chemical change in the hair's structure. Exfoliation, on the other hand, also. Exfoliation with acids can also cause chemical change on the skin by breaking down the bonds between dead skin cells. Chemical change. Number 11, chemical properties. Chemical properties describe how a substance behaves when it reacts with other substances. They tell you what a chemical can do or how it can change. Like someone's personality traits, you can only see them when they interact with others. So for example, Iron has the chemical property of rusting when exposed to oxygen and water. Number 12, chemistry. You guys, chemistry is the science that studies matter, what is made up and how it behaves and how it changes. Think of chemistry as a recipe book of the universe. It explains how the ingredients, like the atoms and molecules, mix, react, and create everything around us. So for example, chemistry explains how cleaners dissolve oil, how acids exfoliate the skin, and how hair color changes the hair shaft. Every skincare product from moisturizer to sunscreen is based on chemistry. Number 13, 
Combustible. A combustible substance is something that can catch fire and burn, but usually needs a higher temperature to ignite compared to something that's flammable. Like, for instance, wood in a campfire. It burns, but you need a good flame or heat to get it started. So, for example, some oils, polishes, and solvents in salons are combustibles, but won't burst into flames instantly, but can still burn if exposed to enough heat. Number 14. Combustion. Combustion is the chemical reaction of a substance with oxygen that produces heat and light. In other words, it's the process of burning. Like lighting a candle, the wax reacts with oxygen in the air, creating flame, heat, and light. An example would be a gas stove flame or a cigarette lighter are examples of combustion in daily life. Number 15, compound molecules. What's the definition? Compound molecules are formed when two or more different elements join together chemically, like a recipe, flour plus sugar plus eggs make something new, like a cake. In the same way, hydrogen plus oxygen make a new substance, water. Example, water H2O equals two hydrogen atoms plus one oxygen atom. Number 16, electrons. Electrons are tiny, negatively charged particles that move around the center nucleus of an atom. Imagine the atom like a mini solar system. The nucleus is the sun and electrons are the planets orbiting around it. Another example, the way electrons move is what allows electricity to flow. So when you plug in a facial steamer or a galvanic machine, electrons are at work. Number 17, element. What's the definition? An element is a pure substance made up of only one kind of atom. It can't be broken down into anything simpler by normal chemical means. Think of an element like the letters of the alphabet. Each letter is unique and when you combine them, you can form words. Compounds, for instance. An example, oxygen, O, hydrogen, H, and carbon, C, are examples of elements. Number 18, emulsifier. What is an emulsifier? And an emulsifier is an ingredient that helps blend oil and water together, two things that normally do not mix. Think of an emulsifier like a matchmaker or a bridge that holds hands with oil on one side and water on the other side, keeping them mixed. An example, in skincare, emulsifiers are what keep lotions and creams smooth instead of separating into oily and watery layers when you apply. Emulsifiers. I hope you're finding all of this information helpful. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with someone who you believe could find this information helpful as well. Number 19, endothermic reaction. An endothermic reaction is a chemical reaction that absorbs heat, meaning energy, from its surroundings, making the area around it feel cooler. Think of it like a sponge soaking up heat. The reaction pulls in energy instead of giving it off. Like when ice melts, it takes in heat from its surrounding to turn into water. That would be endothermic reaction. Number 20, exothermic reaction. An exothermic reaction is a chemical reaction that releases heat energy 
into its surroundings, making an area feel warmer. Like a campfire, the reaction gives off heat and sometimes light. An example, hand warmers work through an exothermic reaction. Iron powder reacts with oxygen, releasing heat. Number 21, hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means water loving. It's a substance that easily mixes with or attracts water. Like a sponge soaking up water, hydrophilic ingredients pull water in and hold on to it. An example would be glycerin, hyaluronic acid, and aloe vera. They are examples of hydrophilic. They draw water to the skin, helping it stay hydrated. Number 22, lipophilic. Lipophilic means oil loving. And oil loving, it's a substance that mixes well with oils, but not with water. Think of it like oil and oil mixing easily, but it repels water. Example, oils, butters, and some vitamins like vitamin E are lipophilic. They dissolve in oil-based products. In skincare, lipophilic ingredients help moisturize, protect, and deliver oil-soluble actives in creams, serums, and balms. Number 23, ionization. Ionization is the process where an atom or molecule gains or loses electrons and becomes an ion with a positive or a negative charge. Start with a neutral atom. Imagine a tiny ball, an atom, that normally has the same number of protons and electrons. Because the positives and negatives balance, it has no overall charge, it's neutral. Now, gain or lose electrons. If the atom loses an electron, it becomes positive, called a cation. If the atom gains an electron, it becomes negative, called an anion. What are the results of that? The atom is now charged particle called an ion. The process of becoming charged is called ionization. Hope that helps. You're at the finish line for part one, number 24, matter. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Basically everything you can touch, see, or feel. Another analogy is that air, water, skin, and even your shampoo are all matter because they have mass and occupy space. Number 25, miscible. Miscible means two liquids can mix together completely without separating. Think of it like water and alcohol. When you pour them together, they blend perfectly. Another example, in skincare, glycerin, which we know is water-based, can mix with water because they are miscible. Sometimes cosmetic formulations rely on miscible liquids to create uniform serums or solutions. Miscible. Well, you guys, that concludes the part one of our chemistry terminology state board prep. Be sure that if you want to keep studying, be on the lookout and go check out part two to keep learning and keep reviewing. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your continued support. Again, be sure to follow me on all social media platforms as Glam and Beyond, or feel free to scan that QR code there to find me a lot quicker. You guys, thank you once again. Give this video a thumbs up. Good luck on your test. And as always, let's keep going. Let's keep growing. And I'll see you on the next one.